You wouldn't think things like diver rash or thrush could be studied on the International Space Station, but an investigation is looking at that type of bacteria common to us here on Earth to see how it reacts in microgravity. We work with the yeast, it's called Canada albicans, that causes fairly common and superficial diseases, um, infections such as thrush, fungal nails, diaper rash, um, and it can also cause more serious systemic um, sort of potentially fatal diseases as well. And you've completed your experiment, correct? Our experiment went up in October of 2012 and spent about 28 days on ISS. Yeah. So why is the ISS an ideal place to study things that may cause diaper rash or something like that? Right, well like I said, Canada is a fairly common yeast. About 25% of the population is exposed to it at some point. Um, and if you combine that with the reality that uh, we've heard here and, and we've heard lots of places that astronauts have a somewhat com compromised immune system and then if you combine that with a potentially infectious agent that's why NASA is interested in it and that's why it's really important to be able to study in an environment where there is prolonged exposure to those microgravity sort of extreme environment conditions. How would that bacteria get to the space station? So this is a yeast that can be, that we can be carriers of it. And so we can carry it along with us when, when we're moving around. And as an opportunistic pathogen, a lot of times it doesn't cause disease. We don't even really know it's there. And it's only when we have somewhat of a compromised immune system that it gets to do its thing. So how did the experiment work exactly on station? So basically everything is self-contained the way we did it. And we grew cells in liquid culture. The, the difference is, is just the technology and the hardware portion of it. So we use what we call tricked out test tubes, if you will, where the, in the, within the test tube, the cells are separate from their media and they're separate from the sort of fixative agent at the very end. And the crew member just basically activates them by turning a, a crank at given times um, to initiate cell growth and then ultimately to halt cell growth. Um, so we get we got cells back sort of in these contained tubes. Some of them had already been fixed on station. We also got some cells back viable, which was an important part of the experiment. We weren't sure with all of the time constraints whether the cells would actually come back viable and in a, in a position that we could test them once they got back to the lab. And in fact, that worked well. So what have we learned? Have you learned anything so far? Oh, we've learned a lot. <laughs> it was our first exposure to um, International Space Station type of research, and we flew on Space Expedition CRS-1, so the learning curve was steep. But scientifically, you know, some of the things that we predicted were going to happen did. Uh, we found that the yeast was a little bit more resistant to antifungal agents. Um, we also found that it was a little... Um, it, it could overcome the monocytes a little bit when we tested that. We also found some things that didn't change as we predicted. The cell shape, the colony, basically when it, when it grows as a, a colony, that structure, both of those structures really weren't as we predicted, but that's why we do the experiments. And that'll do it for us here from the Payload Operations Integration Center in Huntsville. Now back to you at Mission Control in Houston.